I'm going to look at an example. I'm going to do two examples. So uh, first I'm going to look at a rotation. And for this rotation, I'm going to first do it the hard way. And then I'm going to do it in an easier way uh, using what we just found out about the standard coordinate vectors. First thing to recognize is that a rotation is a linear transformation. If I take some u and some v, then I'm going to have right, some resultant u plus v. If I were to rotate this whole thing, so rotating u plus v is going to be the same thing as rotating u and rotating v and then adding them. Same thing with stretching it. If I take some vector u and stretch it, so I get cu, rotating this and then stretching it is the same as rotating the stretched vector. Okay, so this is a linear transformation. And I went to Wikipedia, and because I can never remember these silly formulas, the idea is this, is, let's see, this is my vector u, and this is going to be my rotated vector u. So I want to figure out how do I write t in terms of my original vector u. So the first thing to notice is that if this has some vector, or sorry, some length l, this height is going to be l sine of phi, this distance is going to be l cosine of psi, sorry, that's psi. So my u I can write as l cosine psi, l sine of psi, right, so I'm assuming I know the length in this angle, then the rotated vector is going to be the same thing, only now my angle is going to be psi plus theta. Okay, so I'm going to mess around with this using these angle sum formulas, and I'm going to see if I can write this out in terms of my original matrix or original vector u. So let's see, so tu. It's going to be L, and let's see, cosine of psi plus theta is going to be cosine theta, cosine psi, I'm going to multiply through by L, sine theta, sine phi, and likewise L of sine psi plus theta, if I multiply everything by L, I'm going to have L sine theta, cosine phi, plus L cosine theta, sine phi. So let's see, let me break this up into two pieces. It's going to be L cosine theta, cosine psi. L sine theta, cosine psi. I'm going to have minus L sine theta, sine psi. It's going to be L cosine theta, sine psi. All right. Now notice I've got. L cosine theta there, that's really the x coordinate, that's my L sine theta, that's my y coordinate. All right, so if I think of this as x and y, now here I've got L sine theta, that's y, and L cosine theta, that's x. So let me rewrite this as x cosine psi, y cosine psi. It's going to be minus y sine psi, x sine psi. Let me bring this all together again. So this is what? x cosine psi minus y sine psi. Okay, this is going to be y. 
cosine psi plus x sine of psi. So I want to figure out how do I write this as a matrix times a vector. So this is going to be my x and y. For the top row, my x is being multiplied by cosine psi. My y is multiplied by minus sine y. Let me rewrite that so it's a little nicer. So this is minus sine of psi. Now for the second row, my y is multiplied by cosine of psi and my x is multiplied by sine of psi. So this is my rotation matrix that rotates some angle theta. If I multiply that by my x, this will take any vector and rotate it in the 2D plane. Okay. Now, first of all, that's a mess. And second of all, I had to uh, f remember what these crazy formulas are, which I can never remember. Um, I know this is a linear combination, so there's going to be an easier way to do this. And here's the thing. I only have to worry about two vectors, E1 and E2. If I can figure out how to rotate E1 and E2, I can form that matrix R by just using the columns. The first column is going to be this vector, and the second column is going to be that vector. So if I do that, what do I get? So again, this is L. So this is going to be, in this case, in this, oops, in this case, L is 1. So I actually don't need to worry too much about that. What am I going to have? This distance is going to be sine of theta. This distance right there is going to be cosine of theta. So T of E1 is going to be the vector. So the x component is cosine of theta. And the y component is sine of theta. And now I've got to figure out what's T of E2. Oh, great. So this distance, oops, is 1, or that length is 1. I've got to be a little careful here. This is going to be minus sine of theta. And this distance here is going to be cosine of theta. So let's see. So the x component is going to be minus sine of theta. The y component is going to be cosine of theta. So my rotation matrix, the first column comes from here. Second column comes from here. And hopefully that's the same thing as I had before. So T of x is going to be the matrix R theta times x. And you notice finding this was much easier to do, and the geometry was much easier to figure out and work with. OK, last example here is we're going to define something called the identity matrix. Uh, the identity transformation basically just takes a me um, vector and returns the same vector. And again, this is a linear transformation, because if I take the sum of two vectors, Then the identity acting on this is still going to just be the same thing, is u plus v. And that's the same thing as the identity of u plus the identity of v. Likewise, if I take i times cu, that's just cu by definition, but that's the same, that u is the same thing as i of u. And so that's a linear transformation. Now I need to be a little more careful with my um, notation here. Notice this thing is taking a vector in Rn and it's returning a vector in Rn. So to keep track of that, we'll always try to put an in there because otherwise later on when we start using this matrix, it's going to get a little confusing. Okay, so this is a linear transformation. 
And I want to figure out what is that matrix associated with it. So let me get rid of all this. So let's see. Let me go ahead and get rid of all this. Um, so this is going to be, we'll call it IN. It's going to have some matrix. This vector here is going to be I of E1. But since it's the identity, this is just E1. So the first column of the identity matrix is E1. The second column is going to be I of E2. That's just E2. The third column is going to be I, e of, I of E3, which is just E3. And this keeps on going down until the very end is just EN. So what does this look like? The first entry is going to be 1, 0, 0, lots of zeros. Second entry is going to be 0, 1, 0. Third is going to be 0, 0, 1, and all zeros. We keep that up. We're going to basically have ones there. And the last entry is going to have a 1 down at the bottom, and the rest are zeros. So again, this matrix is IN. And what's nice about this is IN times any vector is the vector itself. And this is going to help us when we try to do algebra. So if I try to take AX minus X, I got to be careful. I can't distribute this. I can't pull this out or factor this because, right, this is a matrix. And I can only take a matrix and subtract another matrix. So if I write this now as AX minus I X, this doesn't make sense, but now this makes sense. And I can start doing some basic algebra now. Okay? All right. Thank you.